In this video to accompany lesson 17 in your lab manual, we're going to be focusing on the brachial plexus and the five primary terminal nerves originating from that plexus that innervate the shoulder and the arm. We'll be using two lab resources that you've already been introduced to, the Flatman model of the nervous system and the arm model that we previously used to study muscles. So first a quick review. Recall that a nerve plexus is a complex interwoven network of nerves that originate from anterior rami of the spinal nerves. There are four major nerve plexuses, the cervical plexus, the brachial plexus, the lumbar plexus, and the sacral plexus. We've already talked about the lumbar plexus and the sacral plexus when we were discussing the lower limb region, and now we're gonna be moving on to the brachial plexus. So each brachial plexus is formed from the anterior rami of spinal nerves C5 through T1, and these components travel superior to the first rib and continue to the axilla or the armpit. Now the brachial plexus is more complex than the lumbar and sacral plexuses that you've already studied because of the multiple branching and merging patterns that ultimately arise from the anterior rami. So very briefly, the five anterior rami that are colored here in orange and are also known as roots merge to form three trunks, each of which then splits into its own anterior and posterior division. Once these reach the axilla, these divisions are then going to converge to form three cords. The names of the cords reference their position relative to the axillary artery, which travels in this region as well. There's a lateral cord, a medial cord, and a posterior cord. Nearly 20 nerves originate from some point in this network, but in, the, in this course we're only going to focus on the five major terminal branches. The musculocutaneous nerve, which innervates the anterior upper arm muscles, the median nerve that innervates the anterior forearm muscles, the ulnar nerve that innervates the medial side of the anterior forearm, the axillary nerve which innervates the deltoid and teres minor in the shoulder region, and the radial nerve which innervates the posterior upper arm and the posterior forearm muscles. So let's go ahead and now review these components on our Flatman model. This is the entire model. We're going to go ahead and zoom it a little bit and eventually we're going to be looking at this view to see the nerves heading all the way down to the distal part of the arm. But for now, let's zoom on into this region of the brachial plexus itself. So you can see how we have our five spinal nerves that are contributing to this plexus, C5 through T1. And ultimately, we're going to have, um, as I mentioned before, a bunch of splitting and re-merging going on all throughout this region, just lateral to the neck. But eventually, by the time we get to this region here, in the axilla or armpit region, we should at that point be able to clearly see our three different cores. I've labeled the lateral cord here in L, the posterior cord in P, and then the M is referencing the medial cord. So let's now take a look at those five terminal branches that are coming from these cords. So let's start by looking at that posterior cord and the branches that come from that cord. The posterior cord is going to end up splitting into two components, one of which is the axillary nerve and the other is the radial nerve. Now the axillary nerve is going to innervate the deltoid muscle and the teres minor. And so if you wanna be looking towards that deltoid muscle to find that nerve. And sure enough, if we find that posterior cord and follow it on around in this model, here that you can see in orange, I've outlined where that axillary nerve is going to be. The other split coming off of that posterior cord is going to be the radial nerve, and that is the one that is going to travel all along the posterior, or innervate all of the posterior muscles of the arm. So we're gonna get an, um, the continued view of that one here in just a minute. So what about the lateral cord and the medial cord? These two cords contribute fibers to three different terminal branch nerves. And these three nerves form a very obvious M shape in this region. Let's go ahead and look at those individual nerves that make up that M. We can see how the lateral cord is going to contribute some fibers to create the musculocutaneous nerve. Some fibers are going to branch off the lateral cord and merge with some that are coming from the medial cord to form the median nerve and then the medial cord is going to contribute the rest of its fibers to the ulnar nerve. And so those are the three nerves that kind of make up this M shape. And so we can find that, go back to that shape here on our model. We can see that musculocutaneous nerve coming only from the lateral cord. We can then see the median nerve that's coming from both the lateral and the medial cord. And then finally the ulnar nerve as well. So there you can kind of see that red, blue, and green shaped M. As a little mnemonic to help remember this, because of the, the shape of this M, 
Uh, some people say that this looks like it would be the logo for Mickey Mouse University. So Mickey, musculocutaneous, mouse, median, university, ulnar. So Mickey Mouse University in that order, that's where the M comes from. We can see the exact same structure on the other side of the body as well. Obviously the M would be in the opposite order. And so you can see that on this model. Um, again, we've got our medial cord here, and that's gonna give rise to the ulnar and the median nerve, our lateral cord, which gives rise to the median and the musculocutaneous. We can see our orange axillary nerve coming off of the posterior cord. And then also here I've marked in purple that, again, that radial nerve. I do just wanna point out that on this specific model, the branching point here of the posterior cord is a little more obvious than it is on the right side. Um, it's kind of been the yellowish colors rubbed off just a little bit there, but I do want to at least point out to you here so that when you're looking at these still photographs later without the color lines on them that th this branching is actually occurring on both sides, even if it's a, um, a little more obvious on one versus the other. So let's keep on going down the arm now and get a view of these and specifically I want to focus on the radial, the median, and the ulnar nerves because the musculocutaneous is going to stay only in that anterior forearm region, anterior upper arm region and then the axillary is just going to be in that shoulder region. So the rest of the way down though, we should be able to trace the radial nerve, the median nerve, and the ulnar. So let's just start by looking at this right arm, because if you recall, um, or as you, hopefully you'll notice on this model, the right arm is in anatomical position, but the left arm is not. So let's just stick with the right here. So we're looking at the anterior side throughout here. So any nerve that disappears behind a bone, is it's implying that that's on the posterior side there. And we can see that the radial nerve, again, in this upper arm region does do that. It's coming from that posterior cord, so it should be behind everything else. But right around that, um, kind of the region of the elbow there near that lateral epicondyle, it's going to wrap around a little bit and come a bit more on to that lateral side of the arm. So I want you to think about the radial nerve, once we get down to the forearm, as being associated with the lateral or the thumb side of the forearm and that is where the radius is going to be found. So that makes it a nice and convenient as well. The median, however, notice that not only the, it, that is, uh, its position really doesn't change between the upper arm and the forearm. It's pretty much staying there as the most middle one of the group of three. It is the median, it is the one in the middle. So keep thinking about how that one is traveling right down that midline of the anterior part of the arm, both the upper arm and the forearm. And then last but not least, the ulnar nerve. That ulnar nerve is going to stay on that medial side the entire time, on that pinky side of the arm, um, all the way down to the hand as well. So by the time we get to the forearm, everything is nice and parallel, and we've pretty much finished all of our crossing there, um, as you can see it on this model. Now on the other side of the body, on the other side of this model, if we head over here to the left arm, one thing you should notice, again, is that this is not an anatomical position, so pause for a second and ask yourself what action has occurred to create this position. And as an extra little clue, I'll let you know that right now this arrow is pointing to the dorsal side of the hand as opposed to the palmar side of the hand on the other side. So hopefully you've been able to deduce that in this case this individual has pronated that arm, so that's also why we see all of the crossing of the ulna and the radius at this point. So if I want you to, again, just pause the video for a second and see if you can go all the way back up here to our brachial plexus, identify your nerves there, and then follow them all the way down. Can you tell which nerve is which once you get down here? Because we can only still see two of them. We can't see all three of them now. And hopefully you were able to figure out that the one that we can't see is the median nerve because that one is there on that anterior side. It doesn't have a preference to the lateral or the medial or the radial or the ulnar side as we can see with those two nerves. So I'm pointing this out especially because some people get confused and they think as I'm following this blue line here, that's the median nerve. They see how this continues almost along the same line here. Um, as the ulnar nerve, but so while it looks like the median nerve is just disappearing for a little bit, it does disappear there because it's now on the other side of the arm, but this is the ulnar nerve, not the median nerve. Just as we've talked before about kind of the general rule when identifying muscles of follow the tendons, follow the tendons, follow the nerves, follow the nerves. If you're just looking at something in a very specific small region of the arm, for example, you're going to have tunnel vision. Don't just focus on that. Follow it distally, follow it proximately, see where it goes. 
So if you were to just look at a nerve here, you could either follow it distally to see is it ending up on the lateral side or is it the medial side, the thumb, thumb side or the pinky, the radius or the ulna. Or you could follow it on back to the plexus where it comes from and see um, you know, which one would this be based on that initial branching. Or even better, do both and confirm that you're coming up with the same identification. We're going to examine these nerves by starting at the proximal end of the arm. So let's begin by actually removing some of these more superficial muscles so we can get a better view of the nerves underneath. So I'm going to start by removing several of these flexor muscles that we've looked at before, as well as our brachioradialis and our two extensor carpi radialis muscles. So now we should be able to see all three of the nerves that we would expect to be able to find in our anterior forearm region. So first of all, heading right down the middle here, without any blood vessel next to it is going to be the median nerve. Remember that median means directly in the middle, and so this one is the median nerve that's running right down the middle of the forearm. This is the nerve that gets pinched off in the wrist and can ultimately um, and passes through the carpal tunnel and um, when that nerve is being pinched off, that's what can result in carpal tunnel syndrome. Over on this side, on the medial side of the arm, we should be finding another nerve that is right up against the bone on this side, which would be the ulna, and that is the ulnar nerve, in addition to the ulnar artery that is right next to it. On the lateral side of the forearm is where we should be looking for the radial nerve, and we can get a nice view of the radial nerve right here. So while it's going to be starting out, on the posterior part of the upper arm, it's going to move a little more laterally as it heads down towards the forearm. And so that radial nerve is then gonna be right up against that radial artery and veins. And as you can see, that radial, arm, that radial nerve is coming from that posterior view as well. So let's continue looking at this region here as long as we're following that one. So here again is our triceps brachii. We've got our lateral head and our long head. Um, and as well as our deltoid that's up over here. I'm gonna remove those muscles as well. And now that these muscles have been removed, we can see the rest of the radial nerve. So this is one part of the radial nerve when it is more posterior in the upper arm. And then you can see it come out here a little bit more laterally. Here's our lateral epicondyle. And then continuing on down the lateral part of the forearm. If we look up over here where we removed the deltoid, you can see another set of nerves right here and all of the yellow stripes that you see there, the yellow markings, those are meant to represent branches of the axillary nerve. If you recall, the axillary nerve innervates two muscles that you're responsible for, the teres minor and the deltoid. So here you can see our teres minor and sure enough, it has some of these nerve fibers going to it. And then we remove the deltoid, but so that's going to be our axillary. Let's move on up here and look at the anterior part of the upper arm. So we already mentioned before that this was the median nerve coming up right down the middle, right kind of in the region of that uh, coronoid fossa in the anterior part of the elbow. And this is gonna continue all the way up that midline of the arm. And so this is ultimately going to be leading to the medial and the lateral cords. And so right when that split happens, that's where you can also see the axillary artery coming through there. So that's again, all of our median nerve and where we can see it here in the upper arm. And then the last one that we can see over here from this perspective is this nerve right there, which is our ulnar nerve. The ulnar nerve is basically what your funny bone is. Um, here you can see our medial epicondyle and you can see the nerve passing right along there. When you hit this part of your elbow, this is what you're hitting. You're smashing that nerve um, and that's why you get that little spark of pain there. But we can follow that ulnar nerve all the way on up and ultimately to that medial cord. So heading up down the middle here, we can see again that median and the ulnar nerve. And then there's the last one that we would expect coming from that lateral branch, and that would be our musculocutaneous nerve. I'm gonna show it to you from a couple different angles. Here's one angle of it right there. So it branches off pretty quickly. And then I'm gonna turn this arm around. 
and show you the other perspective as well. And that's where we're going to get the other part of the musculocutaneous nerve coming off. Um, the other ones that you can see from here, this is just another view of the radial nerve coming off of that posterior cord. So here's the first part of it coming off. I'm gonna flip this around. And here it continues. And then we already mentioned how you can follow it down in the forearm. So that radial nerve is actually visible in three different spots on this model. And then this part right here, this is actually the other side of the axillary nerve, the more proximal part of that nerve, right where it's coming off of that posterior cord. So again, this is coming over here. Here's approximately you know, where we're gonna find um, it heading onto the posterior and lateral side. And again, you can see it coming on out here and going to the teres minor as well as the deltoid muscle, which is missing right now. So there you go. Those are all five of the terminal branches of the brachial plexus that you are responsible for and where they can be found on this model.